morning once again. This is another diecast review, another V8 Supercar diecast review, and it's the third part of my triple header diecast review for my package, my big boxo cars from Limpin Holdings. There's another shout out to them. And I bet you're all wondering what the final car is. It must be a good one, because I've saved it after two exceptionally good cars. I've saved it till last because I know nearly all of the people on my, I, well, my YouTube, excuse me, my YouTube channel was built up originally as a NASCAR channel, and I know a lot of a lot of you watching, a lot of the people who will watch this are NASCAR fans first and foremost. So I'm going to review. I've saved the car till last for the driver that nearly all of you will recognise because he's now a star of NASCAR, but he was not that long ago a legend in the making in V8 supercars. And here is his car. This is this model is the 2005 Marcus Ambrose Pertec Stone Brothers Racing Ford Falcon. And as you can see, it's 2005. He's got a one on it because this was when he was reigning champion for the second time. He won the championship back to back in 03 and 04, which I think is an exceptional achievement. He couldn't quite three peat and do it again in 05. So instead, he supported Russell Ingall, his teammate, to get his championship together before departing in 06. I believe he left straight away in 06 to go to NASCAR. And I believe he won his last race in this car. He won the last round of the V8 Supercars for 2005. So left on a, on a maximum high. You really can't leave any higher than that. And he was a fantastic racer. Very aggressive driver. Had some fantastic rivalries. You can always tell if a good driver is potentially like really good and very aggressive the amount of rivalries he has he had rivalries with almost every other good driver in the field he had a big ongoing scrap with Mark Scaife and the Holden Racing Team boys had a big feud with Greg Murphy which escalated when they almost had a punch up at Bathurst one year when, they, when Murphy crashed into him rather unceremoniously so he had plenty of rivalries he had plenty of opposition he annoyed everyone every Holden fan in the country by being a very successful Ford driver first and foremost he didn't take any crap, he was a great driver, very talented, but also actually a surprisingly nice guy when he wasn't threatening to break check and wipe out other drivers. And obviously he's now gone on to make a really good career in NASCAR, which, one, which I'm dead chuffed for, I'm really proud he's doing so well in NASCAR. As are most people in Australia, I believe a lot of people in Australia are really proud to see kind of one of their own succeeding in one of the biggest motorsports in the world, as I believe NASCAR is, if not the biggest. Well, it's better than Formula 1 anyway. So let's have a look at this car. You may be wondering why I got the car that he didn't win the title in. Well, mainly it's because it's my favourite variation of the livery. It's a bit like the Jamie Wincup car earlier. I just like this variation of the livery the most. And once again, it proves my rule about fuel and oil companies looking good on a race car. The Pertec sponsorship looks excellent with the blue and red. Like that, it's fantastic. It's actually a very simple paint scheme. A lot of them were in these days, so it looks very simple, very effective. And it's similarly heavy, like the Russell Ingall car. Uh, from, it's from the same vintage, obviously, so it's basically the same shell, it's the same model Falcon, same levels of detail, they all look fantastic, the wheels turn as they do on all of the classic Hall Express cars, and as you can see, they turn freely as well, and they roll freely as well, I've tested it, which is very useful for my stop motions. There you can see detail of the front, of the splitter, and of the spoiler around the back, and there's detail inside the car as well. And this is also, along with the Ingle car, one of my favourites from the series. I did also have a soft spot for Ambrose. I preferred Ingle of the two, but I wasn't annoyed when Ambrose won the championships. So let's put it that way. I wasn't annoyed. And that's kind of where I got my thing that I was a Ford guy, I guess. I've always settled on the blue half of the, the red versus blue, Holden versus Ford battle. I think it was because I got into the Stone Brothers racing cars around this time, and I've always had an affinity with Stone Brothers racing ever since. I'm absolutely gutted Shane Van Gisbergen is leaving the series next year really really disappointed because he was kind of my favorite driver as the new driver of the nine car that i grew up supporting when russell ingle drove it so i've always had a bit of an affinity with the stone brothers mainly because of drivers like russell ingle and marcus ambrose and you're probably wondering i've gone for kind of recent kind of 2009 2010 2011 era cars won't two cars from 2005 kind of screw up my stop motion field well no because here's my idea See if you like this, see if you go along with this. Comment away and tell me if you think this is silly or not. But I like the idea, I might get two modern Stone Brothers cars from like 2010, 2011, whenever, and have these two as kind of a Stone Brothers Legends team. 
and I'll have this for other teams. Like I'll have a Holden Racing team, team, like a modern team, and have a Holden Racing team legends where one of the cars will be driven by Mark Scaife, who unquestionably was a legend for HRT, and so on and so forth. I'll do kind of modern versions of the team and then a legends version of the team. So this car and the Russell Engel Falcon, I'll bring into shot here. So these two will comprise the Stone Brothers Racing Legends stable. And I will actually have Marcus Ambrose and Russell Ingle drive them. I think it's only fair. They are the legendary drivers that made them legendary. Or at least famous. They were well, they won three championships back to back for three years straight. So I think that puts them in pretty famous company. So what do you think about that as an idea? I basically love the fact that in my stop motion series I'll be able to pitch the current kings of the crop, Triple Eight, against the old kings of the crop in Mark Scaife and HRT and Marcus Ambrose and Russell Ingle and Stone Brothers. Comment away, tell me what you think of that idea. I've already had some good response to the idea of having this Stratco Racing Holden as a kind of wild car. car. So comment away, tell me what you think. I'll keep you posted on how the stop motion series is coming together. I'm starting to design a track, so I'll put up a video of that very, very soon to show you what I've got for a, a nice road course, kind of influenced by Bathurst and Adelaide, kind of a mix of the two. So. I'll keep you posted on everything. For now, that's it. That's the end of my. That's that was everything that came in this. I'll show you the box. This huge box. Well, there you go. It just blinds the camera. So it's a big old box. That was everything that came in that package. And one last recommendation: Limbin Holdings. I can't recommend them enough. If you want any kind of V8 supercar models, go. Just go to their website now. Do it. They are a great little, great little company, and they deserve your money, and you deserve their models. So. I shall stop rambling now. Hope you've enjoyed these reviews and hopefully I'll be back very, very soon.